everyone, welcome to another vlog here on the World of Coasters. Today myself and Louise have come to Fort Park Resort in Surrey. Uh, we're actually here to visit the event we've on for the summer holidays, which actually, from what we've seen so far, looks like an absolute belter. So they're running Carnival, which is new for 2022. Uh, looks like there's lots of little things going on around the park. Lots of shows, there's snacks, like special snacks. Like we're mainly here to have a look at the shows and all that because we both said it's going to be busy. We come here a lot. We're not really like the rides queues are long as you know summer holidays. Um, so yeah, we're going to have a look at probably look at the sheet, see what's on as the fire eaters and all that. Yeah. One thing that I am interested in seeing though, they've actually got a scare maze for this. So trailers uh, has been converted to Bozo the Clown's Escape or something like that. Um, I think we're going to have to have a look at that later on open for 12. But yeah, just coming round to the carnival area, there's a couple of sites. This doesn't actually open until 12. There's loads of uh, like side games, various things to do, fortune tellers. Be interesting to have a look at this, yeah. Um, I'm really liking what they've done for this because Fort Park in the past have been a bit drab and boring during the summer period. So this new event really should liven it up. So annual pass holders now, or platinum annual pass holders now, get a voucher to redeem a cup um, at one of the parks. Uh, so we've redeemed our one. We've actually got one for each of the parks already, haven't we, Lou? It's overflowing. Yeah, it's a carnival one. They've actually got like specially themed ones. Uh, but yeah, we have one of the original ones from um, Fort Park, and it's a bit bigger. Yeah. So we got we we just decided, oh, let's get a smaller one for the day, and that comes with free refills. We got two refill vouchers, um, which we use throughout the season elsewhere from the Alton Towers and all that. Yeah, it's nice to get back here. We haven't actually been here in a little while, have we? The Queen's Jubilee was the last time we came here and the last part we visited was quiet and yeah it was quiet. Um, I don't know whether it's going to be busy today. Car park was a bit dead but they're open till 7 today which is pretty good. Yeah. Any rides in particular you want to go on first though? Go on there. Okay let's have a look at the queue for Rush and go from there. The great SNS uh, Scream and Swing built in 2005 this one. Uh, I do love it. It's absolutely brilliant. So I've actually got a special map for this event just to show how much is on. I'll just open it up for you. Shows you like half of the park map with all the events going on. So there's a lot going on at the junkyard, kind of stealing the name from Fort Park, uh, not Fort Park, Horton Towers there. Uh, but that is where um, I think they're using trailers maze for uh, the scare maze. Like I said, we will look at that later. And then on the other side, we have Carnival, which is the event we just walked past just behind Rush over here. Uh, and that has all the like circus acts and all that throughout the day. Like I say, we're going to be having a look at all of these and hopefully filming them all today. Right, so a great ride there on Rush. Though when we were on it, I said to you, I was like, this doesn't feel as powerful as normal. And Hand. The guy next to us was semi freaking out, and the ride up was like, "Oh, you should have went on the other side. That side's running at full strength." And uh, I got, I overheard that that side basically is not running at full power, which what? really shows. What just, side is that? So people know. So that is the side closest to boarding. If you're going on that, yes. um, not that you get a choice because you have to go where they tell you. But yeah, it's a little bit disappointing. I love Rush. Still a great ride, uh, but yeah. Um, in the queue for that, oh, we're getting sprayed by storm surge. In the queue for that, um, we booked to do trailers at Bozo's Breakout here. It's six pounds upcharge on that, or four pound eighty if you're an annual pass holder. So uh, Louise was like, "No, we're not doing that," and I just booked it. There's no time slot on that though, but it's from twelve o'clock, so we can go. I thought it's from one. Oh, it might be. Oh no, it's from yeah, it's from Carnival from one. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm really looking forward to going to the scare maze. Like uh, and it uses trailers, um, like the trailers maze, which you never went on last year. Um, we'll have to get you here for Fortnite, actually. Yeah, I haven't been since 2019. So we're going to have to get Louise on that. Well, I think we're going to go on the Walking Dead ride next, as it's only got a little queue. Uh, as I was saying to Louise earlier, I said, the good thing is, because we come to this park so often, we're going to focus more on Carnival today, aren't we? We're going to do all the little n nitty bits for it. We might not get on some of the coasters. Uh, but we're not allowed to film on the coasters anyway, so it doesn't really make any changes for you. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting on the scare maze later. Anyway, let's get on Walking Dead the Ride.
So we come off of Walking Dead the ride now. Always wait to get back on that one. It's just a little little Vacoma like coaster. It's nothing Hold too down. thrilling, but we have come out into the Fort Mega Store now, which is the main shop in the middle. You don't actually have to pass through this uh, anymore. You used to, didn't you? Though you used to have they literally made like a walkway you couldn't skip. Um, but they've opened it up since the pandemic. Got some new merch by the looks of it. I'm liking the look of these new like free coloured um, t-shirts here for stealth. They've always got a pretty good lineup of merch here. I wonder if they've actually got any carnival merch in this shop. It looks like it's actually going to be over the other side of the store. So have a look. Right, so here is the carnival merch they've got. I'm like to be honest, I'm not really won over by their like seasonal merch like this. I think it looks a little bit tacky. I don't really like mugs that have like the break. Yeah, so like the t-shirts here, these are pretty cool. Just like the standard ones with carnival, 20 pounds there. I need to say 20 euros. God, we've been to Europe too much recently. But yeah. One thing that I do think they're missing out on, and I said this to Louise just now, they've like all got all these like various like these are fridge magnets here that have like these pretty retro looking posters. But they, they should do them as like lithographs or like printouts so you can buy, like a poster pack, I'd pay for that. Yeah. Um, as I think that's really cool. The Carnival Lanyard, again, I'm not totally won over by it, but if you are here, all the prices are here. Um, not too badly priced, but again, I, I think they're missing a trick with the, uh, the posters they've got. So we're heading over towards Colossus and Saw area. We're not going to go on Colossus. You're not, you're not the biggest fan of Colossus, are you? It isn't very... It's really intense to me. I, I find it really intense. i tell you what, we need to get out on Sick, don't we? Yeah. We need to get up to Flamingo Land, onto Sick. Um, it's a bit like, you know, Red Force and Stealth. They're, a bit, they're similar, but they're incomparable. Um, from what I've heard about Sick, it's really smooth. Uh, obviously with the lap bar restraints and all that as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to head around to Wars of Projects at the Exodus site, which I don't really think they've done a lot of work, to be honest. Uh, mainly because they had some planning issues with it. But they've yeah. resubmitted the plans now with uh, various flood things in place. So hopefully, uh, we should be hearing by the end of the summer whether it's going to go ahead or not. So as we enter deep into the Lost City, we've got the, uh, the memorial for the 20th anniversary of Colossus. I love that. Um, but yeah, they've let the grass die off a bit here. Um, so yeah, that's a bit strange. But yeah, here is the first 10 looping coaster in the world. Like I say, I really want to get out to ride sick. As like, I just look at this, it depresses me because it looks like an abandoned roller coaster, doesn't yeah, it? it be a miss in like a... Like, like I would love... Yeah, I, I would love to speak. City, it is. I would love to speak with management at just Merlin and Fort Park and say like, what's the deal with this? Because like, you got to remember, sick. They actually repainted it. Didn't need yeah. a repaint, but they repainted it from its red and yellow to the grey and black, so it looks a bit more like icon colours. But yeah, this coaster just—it really needs a a jet wash and b like this colour. Like, I've shown you, you've seen the original colour, yeah. haven't you? The like turquoisey colour. It's just like really faded. It's really sad actually because it could use a bit of work and like it was the, the coaster that put this part on the map for a lot of people. They've actually started implementing sun cream dispensers here as well. These started off at like Legoland and they've really started putting them out everywhere. It's great to see that they're actually caring about their guests and you can actually find out where they are on the app. And that also includes the water fill stations, which is good to see. Uh, yeah, I was just saying that. I do love the I'm a score soundtrack for this. So one thing that I know Sick will not beat Colossus on. This soundtrack is just awesome. It's my favourite score at Fort Park. And yeah, let's head over towards Project Exodus site. Have a look at the physical rust on the track. It's, it's just sad. I hate it because like, I love this coaster, but it's just it's rough as and it's like rusty. Project Exodus at the moment, nothing happening on site. We will have a quick look. Um, like I said, I had some problems with the environmental agency and flood risk concerns, obviously, because Locksleep area is a flood zone. 
Uh, I did see the plans, they've changed them a little bit, so they've got like smaller footprints, so it's like the the bits that are in the water just have concrete around the footers, which I think will look better because originally it was kind of going to be a whole plateau um, which was like stepped up of concrete. I don't think it would look very good. Fright Nights is 21 this year and Lou, we're going to go to Fright Nights this year because we missed it last year. And Lou, I'm saying it now, Alton Towers Scarefest. We have every, every year we want to go and we never get a chance to because something comes up. I wonder if you can still see into the area. Yeah, you can. Still got the same markings as last time with the um, route to stair and what are you looking at. Uh, the one thing that I don't know whether you can actually see, let's see if I can zoom in on it, is this one for uh, retirement plans for the Rocky Express. The uh, digital zoom on this camera is not that great, but yeah, um, not a lot going on here at the moment. They seem to be doing a bit more clearing, um, but yeah, until the plans have been approved, I suppose they can't do a lot. So over here we've actually got some old Fright Night things here. Freezer, that was from literally back when they started um, Fright Nights. I don't know whether this is meant to be here. But yeah, Freezer hasn't been here for years. 2002 that one opened. And the Freak Show 3D which was in the cinema along there. It's pretty cool. So as we come up from Old Town towards... Um, oh God, what's this called? It's called the, the Harbour now? I'm going to call it Calypso Key because that's all I remember it as being. Oh, what's it called? The Harbour? Oh no, I'm going... No, that's what it used to be around here. <laughs> I was just saying to Louise, this is kind of abused, this little restaurant area here. And I said to her, how cool would this be if they licensed it out and made a Nando's or something here? Something a bit more substantial where you could get something to eat. Because they did have it as a little restaurant area at one point, but it's kind of just where you get your roll over hot dogs. I don't think it's open to the public at the moment. Um, I just feel it's got quite a lot of seating. You could seriously stick a decent sized restaurant here. So yeah, they are using the trailer's maze for Bozo's breakout here. We will be doing this later. Won't be able to film on it. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to give this a go because Bozo's breakout was one of the films in this maze. Now, myself and Lewis went on this. Uh, we just came for a quick visit. We didn't actually film. Louise hasn't been in this maze, so it'll be interesting to see what's changed for this. Uh, but yeah, they're saying the scare rating is about half, the sensory rating is at maximum. The price is down here, £6 for a standard uh, ticket holder, £4.80 for a pass holder or guest, which I don't think is too bad. And uh, that is open from 1 till uh, 5 tonight, although the park's open till 7. So we'll probably get here about 2, 3 o'clock, I imagine, to ride this. Um, as yeah, I'm really excited to go through this. Enter a dark side of the carnival in trailers, break out of Bozo's. A maze with a hilarious twist. The clowns of Bozo's have taken over the award winning attraction, creating an experience that is sure to make you laugh and scream in equal measure. Yeah, very, very weird that they're putting a horror maze in at this time of year, but Fall Park never disappoint with their mazes. So, yeah, looking forward to this later. So there's a few more little carnival bits around here. This is the junkyard area of carnival. I'd say ripping the name directly from Alton Towers' junkyard, which is a scare maze uh, at Scarefest. But yeah, they've got the old Big Top entrance, which was an old scare maze uh, back in the day at Fright Nights. Uh, we actually saw this in a field out at the old Fort Farm when we were doing our, um, our walks around the back of the park during lockdowns and all that. But yeah, this is going to be the much more intense area, like the circus acts are a bit more like gruesome and grisly per se. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to see they painted that back up. It does look like it has a bit of disrepair on it still, but I suppose it goes with a the theme. But yeah, it's all like, looks like they're setting up for the first act now. Oh, they've actually got this all open up now. But yeah, they've, they've temporarily changed the name. Uh, so that was, um, it was Genie, uh, well, no, it was Nitrogenie, that was it. They changed their own and they didn't open it, but yeah, it looks like they've got macaroons, cakes, savoury pies. These are all specifically for this event. Um, I think they're more like for carnival, but they seem to be doing them across the board for all of their events now, which is pretty good to see. Uh, just have a quick look over here now at the uh, things they've got. So yeah, little tiny macaroons along here. Actually, the cupcakes don't look too bad, to be honest. Right, so we've just been given a little bit of Merlin magic, haven't we, Lou? Technically not Merlin, 
Oh well, yeah, okay. So the stand over here is actually being subcontracted out to a company called Piglet's Pantry. Pig's Pantry? Or Piglet's Pantry? Um, I'll put pictures in and all that now. And anyway, I was just filming the treats up ahead. And the woman behind the counter got talking to me and said, Oh, you're on YouTube? I was like, yeah. And she was like, do you want to try something for free? It's like, I mean, I'm not turning down some awesome food. They're here just for the event. They're here till the 19th of August. Um, but yeah, we got a Mississippi mud pie. We're obviously sharing this, but yeah, look we how are. big it is. Like, like, my God, that's huge. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they do all sorts of pies and everything. Savory stuff. I'll put the pictures of their menu in now. I took some pictures just behind because they didn't have a card. But I think this is 375 normally. I don't think that's like uh, expensive. No, but the not size the, of it. the size of it. Like, it's, it's quite deep as well. You can share it. But yeah, do you want to uh, give that a first little bash though and then we'll. I don't, know, uh, I I don't like think you can eat it cleanly, per se. It looks absolutely messy as hell to eat. But yeah, it's like chocolate and cream on top. So uh, let's just try the filling on top. That's nice. Uh, I need to do a video for Insta. Oh my god. That was very nice. I was like, they, they were like, which one do you want? I was like, there's so many to choose from. And then both of us were like, okay, we'll try the pie because it's big enough to share. Yeah, like they had brownies and all that there as well. Um, but yeah, by the looks of it, great offerings. And it's nice to see that actually using the salt. Uh, it was, companies as well, it was called companies. Cookies and Creams, oh, wasn't it? I remember, yeah. Because uh, it was Nightshine. You can just about make out the sign behind here for Nightshine. It's still there. Um, but yeah, now Merlin don't deal with their food. I imagine the company that deal with it, I can't think of the name of it, begins with an A. Ar Ar Aramark or something yeah, like that. But they subcontract these companies in to deal with the uh, food the offerings. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We need to do it on Instagram. I've already ruined it. So digging into it, you can actually see it's at, like mousse inside. So it's like a cheesecake topping, chocolate mousse underneath. Let me just go around the side. It is a messy meal. But you can share this easily. Mm. Easily share this. It's huge. Um, but yeah, thanks to the guys over at Pig's Pantry, uh, just over there at Full Park. You're awesome. And uh, thanks for letting us try your food. And if you're at the park, come give it a go. It tastes amazing. So one of the best roller coasters here, Nemesis Inferno. Uh, not too bad the queue on this bollocks. So it doesn't seem to be through this extension bit. They are using it, but it doesn't seem to be going through it. Uh, I would like to get on this and maybe the swarm at some point, maybe still. But I was just saying to you, I don't mind if we don't get on many rides. Uh, yeah, because we're just like kind of, we're kind of watching um, the carnival bits today. As I said before, we're going to head over towards the rapids now, get that done, then head over to carnival because it opens in 20 minutes. So as we head over towards Rumba Rapids, we've got Stealth here, which I was just saying to Louise, now you've been on Red Force, it's like a little baby, I mean, isn't it? To me, that's nothing. Like Red Force just dwarfs this coaster. Bearing in mind this is only 205 foot, Red Force is 167 foot taller than this ride, uh, which is, well, it's not double the height, but it might as well, you know, it's three quarters of the way there. Uh, we're gonna go on Rumba Rapids now with a five minute queue. And then hopefully we won't miss the first part of the yeah, carnival. The whole point is that we want to see if they've got like an opening. I don't think they do. It's just like the, the ringmaster and his people there. Yeah, so, people. Uh, but oh. yeah, with the with the scare maze later, we don't have a time slot for it. It's just a, a go between one and five to get in the queue for it. So we'll get on Rumba Rapids. Animatronic is a real. Is scared of them ducks? Oh, I didn't see that. Oh. Louise seems to think they're always animatronics. No, only in Disney. No, there's not. Anyway, we're going to head over to the carnival now. We've got three minutes to get there, Lou. Uh, the ringleaders show starts at 12, and then we've got circus acts from 12:30. Lots of stalls over there, so we'll see you over at the carnival site. So here we are at the carnival. It's a couple of minutes after 12. It's actually three minutes past 12 at the moment. So we just missed the start of this. The area is open. It's got like a proper circus show at the entrance here. Looks like it could be a bit of a laugh. So all the show times are up along here uh, in case you're interested. 
So you've got circus acts around the day, fire performers, ring leader show which is on right now, and uh, various other shows. Just like the ring leader is just over there. And, uh, Welcome, one and all, to the carnival. I am the ring leader, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to a carnival unlike any you've seen before. A carnival which has many surprises in store. Absolutely I'd amazing. Like to introduce my favourite trio, yes. the Blossoms. Get that the shot. Trio Get that shot. Meet. So listen to them sing, and you are in for a treat. Now the mind troop is who I shall introduce next. So yeah, plenty of actors out there. Like, I don't think we've ever seen so many actors out in one area. So watch them perform and they will leave you in the air. He will whisk you off to the skies with the stories he tells. This balloon seller has more than just balloons he sells. Now if a look to the future is something that you see, our fortune teller is someone you must meet. She looks to the future but keeps one eye on the past. Her attempt is definitely not one you should leave till last. Day. There are various shows on today, but that was really good. I really love Merlin's. Yeah, Merlin really have pulled out the stops with their shows recently. And Paul Park is really leading the way, I think. Now, the Mardi Gras was really good. I this Paul Park and the Towers are like my favourite for events. Yeah, definitely. Like Chessington are getting there, but that, that was brilliant. We'll stick around here for a little bit. They've got shows throughout the day. We'll get some more rides on and come back. Obviously, this being the carnival side of the park, you've got junkyard over there, so you've got those other actors wearing. And they spoke about Bozo. Yeah, that's we, good, that's good. We fun. don't talk about Bozo, but they're not making the song then. But yeah, they got various merch stalls here, uh, basically selling the same merch. It's all stealth stuff here. They haven't got the Colossus posters and all that, sweets, and then the carnival t-shirts along here. Oh yes, yeah, so they've got another Piglets Farm one here. So yes, yeah, another one by the Piglets uh, Bakery, um, the old Piglets Pantry, sorry. And they sell basically the same stuff they sell at the pantry they're along they're there. They Hello. Hi. We've been over to the stand over the other side at Junkyard, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they've got the same offerings over at this stand. But it's much smaller here. Uh, Hot drinks, soft drinks. Yeah. Looks like some really nice treats in there. So, due to the rain, and I say it's raining, it's drizzling, yeah. isn't it? Uh, they've cancelled the outdoor show for half twelve, meaning we have to come back later on. Uh, myself and Louise are going to go grab something to eat now. It's coming up to one o'clock. Um, well, I say coming up to one o'clock, it's about 35 minutes past twelve. Well, we, we've got some of our sandwiches in the car, haven't we? Yeah. So, we're going to go have them, come back, probably do swarm, um, and then come back and have a look at more of the carnival. We're going to be doing, um, obviously, Bozo's Estate. Looking yeah. forward to that. Um, <laughs> you know, if it's anything like trailers, it'll be really good. So, uh, yeah, we'll probably, if the rain carries on, uh, we'll probably do that when we come back into the park. It's starting to rain quite hard now, so the drizzle is getting harder. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you in a minute, guys. After a short little lunch break, we are back in the park now 
and we're heading back down to the junkyard to go see one of the circus acts down there. As she found out on the app, you can actually go on the actual individual events and click a little like timer when you want to watch That's it. That's something I'd like to see before Paris. Yeah, and it will actually give you a notification on your phone um, before the show's ready. So we're aiming to go back to the carnival about 5.45. There's a dancing thing and then there's the um, mime show you wanted to see. The and the then the fire eater at 6 30. so what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the junkyard now um and then i think after that depending on what the queue's like for uh bozo's escape i think oh. we're gonna be going on that i am excited to get in a scare maze no, we're go find so, well we'll have to do that at some point but yeah especially after um seeing wreck at Porto Ventura, a permanent horror maze i really am excited to get on a horror maze and I know you love them. You love a horror maze. You're just like me. I always get split up from you. <laughs> You'll be selected. You're going to be the birthday yeah, girl. I'm not going to be the birthday girl. <laughs> so let's get over to the junkyard and see what's on offer for the one thirty showing. So we're over at the junkyard uh, carnival area now. It's actually gone half past. It's, it's 13, 31, Lou. And there's meant to be a circus act, but as of yet, there's no one here. I wonder if because it was raining, they might have canceled them for the full hour. Um, but yeah, there's no signs of anyone here. And I imagine if they were gonna run it, the person would be here by now. But yeah, there's plenty of offerings here. You've got one of the grills here, where these were for Oktoberfest last season. The junkyard bar selling so alcohol and all that. And then Carnival Street Food over by Darren Brown's Ghost Train. entertainment offerings there I was just saying for these I could totally do that give me a shot on that it would be it would be something comical but the same music yeah the same music I'd probably topple the whole thing over but Lou it's that time of day now it's not that time of day I don't know what to expect from this it's a brand new maze using the trailers maze I don't know whether it's using the whole of it from what I can see in the description it uses the whole maze but Bozo has broken out into the whole cinema so yeah I'm looking forward to it it's Bozo's breakout I'm next really not not going to be able to film on this one guys uh, obviously with all the horror mazes here uh, but yeah it's a brand new experience for this like it's, it's totally new this, this scare maze but yeah scare rating half sensory rating you're going to be crying we'll see you after bozo's breakout So there's not much of a queue for this it is an upcharge like it uses the same queue this obviously what used to be i'm a celebrity is now the trailers maze but yeah they've actually got rid of all that it still says super spark cinema but yeah guys we're gonna have to leave you here and we'll give you our review after bozo's escape trailers Right, so we've 
just been through trailers, bozos, breakout. Uh, yeah, the film name is about to play. I really like that. That was good. Yeah, I, I, I actually wasn't too bad. Definitely not as scary as their Fright Night. Oh no, they had advertised for eight months. They had less actors in it. There was like one per room. Uh, uses the full maze of trailers, which is like the different movie sets. But they're all clown actors, aren't they? Yeah, like there was one room in particular with the clowns. But if you go through that, that is scary. Oh imagine. yes. Yeah, wait, the easiest way to explain it, I'd probably say it reminds me a bit of Darren Brown's Ghost Train, that sort of vibe. The only thing I would say, like, if I was to make it more scary, is I would be so you ended up spending more time in each room because they are really themed up, but you're rushing yeah, through yeah, you kind so of, scared, but there's no yeah, story. Yeah, you, you, you kind of walk through and there's, there is no story, uh, which with the trailers, there was a bit more of a story, so you'd stop in each room. Yeah, that would be cool. Because I was, was waiting quite, when we got to the dentist room, which is one of the first was, ones. I was quite, waiting for like a little story or something. It was kind of just a walk through, like a bit. I thought it was really good. Like, it was still good. Though. For £4.80, I don't yeah. think it was really bad. £6, yeah, I, I think that's quite fair. Because I know normally during Friday nights, they charge like 10 15 yeah. quid for a maze. It makes me excited for Friday nights. It so. does like that, but that and was brilliant. Tullies, that's what we're going yeah. to Tullies. We're going to Tullies. I don't know whether we're vlogging Tullies, but yeah, really good. Uh, highly recommend it if you're here for Carnival. We'll get you in the mood for Fright Nights. Um, but yeah, brilliant. Can't really fault that. Anyway, now we've got a little bit of a break, but we're going to see more of the Carnival things. So me and Louise are going to go do some of the roller coasters. That isn't too busy now. No. I think it's because it's the World Cup. I don't know. Cup of yeah, the Women's Euro uh, Final, England versus Germany, which starts at five o'clock. So we're going to have a look at some queue times, maybe go on Nemesis, Swarm, I'd like to get Stealth done uh, and Detonate, that's on a five minute queue, so let's uh, carry on with the day. So next ride of the day is going to be the B&M Invert Coaster, that is Nemesis Inferno. Um, a great little coaster actually, as I always say, it's not as good as the original Nemesis at Alton Towers, but still a great addition to this park, pretty cool lineup. Um, yeah, so they've got the cattle pen open, but someone's got to open this gate, so we'll go through that. And it's only a short little queue on this one, we're only in the cattle pen, so we'll see you after our ride. Some more entertainment out of the junkyard there. Didn't have much of a crowd, but they kind of overshot. It didn't start till like in Tom bars. Uh, so a lot of the crowd dissipated before they started. Uh, but yeah, it's great to see they've got a lot of entertainment offerings going on. So we'll be going back to the actual carnival site later on in the day. But we're going to hear some more rides on now. We're going over to the one and only, the Flying Fish. Uh, then might be going over the Swarm. Well, we'll have a look. Detonator had a reading on cube when we went past it, so we decided to give it a miss. People have described machine-like aliens soaring across the sky, so from the deep blue sea, and monsters. After about a 15 minute queue, we're off of the swarm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the operations are really slow on that. And then when we got off, the guy in the like control box made the announcement to his colleagues, which I wouldn't have announced that over the uh, time yeah. because it's yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, our hourly capacity, we've just done 16 trains in the past 40 minutes. It's like, uh, yeah, but a lot that, of people like, wouldn't understand that, would they? Like, yeah, but still, 16 trains. 28 riders a train, it's like seven rows of four when you include both sides. So that's 28 per row times by 16. 448 guests in 40 minutes. Well, I'm glad there's a short queue when we're trying to. Like, that, that is a laughable group. I'd be like, come on, we need to have our game big time. 
Um, we're going to head over towards the dome. Use the brand new, freshly refurbished yeah, toilets. I like them toilets. Yeah. But yeah, I think they were refreshed in the last vlog we did. Obviously, I can't film in the toilets because I look a bit of a creep if I do they that. They are quite cool. They are quite cool. They've got like little capacity things, and I can film the outside where they've got the lights, and it tells you when the cubicles are in use, which is quite cool. It lets you know when they're full. I need a good voice when you know who's doing a pool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you know what though? I'm having a really good day today. I thought it was going to be super busy and badly. I think it's because the England I, match. Well, I think it's quite. I think, I think you, it's because of the England match, like you say, but it's also going to be because they've actually got a lot of shows on today. Yeah. So shows really do help with capacity, um, and they're knocking it out of the park with their shows here. I'm really looking forward to getting back to the carnival later and having a look what else there's on to offer. Uh, so let's carry on round. I think we're heading towards the shore and all that afterwards. I don't know. I really want, you know, we'll see how it is. But yeah, we've got the play park over here. Uh, we'll see you round by saw. So we're in the saw area, however, lights closed. So we're just having a chill. I'm actually soaking in the rays of the sun. The sun has broken through. I had to actually bust out the sun cream uh, as the sun is quite hot today. It's about 25 degrees. But yeah, we're, uh, we're just watching because they're like they're doing some sort of work to it because the uh, the switch track down the bottom of this keeps moving. I can tell because the rope on the side for the little like uh, cable that goes up and down the lift hill uh, keeps really moving. And there's a lot of like alarms and all that. Um, but yeah, they haven't been running it or testing it yet, so. Hopefully they'll be reopening it soon and we can uh, jump straight on it. Alright, so after sitting down for only about 10 minutes there, if that, um, I was just about to go off and get a freestyle, wasn't I, at the Colossus shop. Then they put a announcement over the tunnel and we're going to be walking on this, basically. It must have been quite a major breakdown because I actually emptied the queue, so going to be on Saw the Ride up next, one of the most intense rides in the park. <laughs> so thank god we only walked on that, it was about a two minute wait in that. My god, that coaster like, it's okay but it runs fast sometimes and that was running quite fast. It's just very intense, like you were on the inside, I was on the outside. And literally, like, so I was pushing on the last dive move, it really froze you into it. I could feel my face just like, like spazzing out as we went through it. Um, but yeah, very intense, it's giving me a bit of a headache actually. I know the age is getting to me because I'm like, I need a coffee now. Um, so I think that's what we're going to be doing now, is finding something to drink. You want to do Black Mirror Labyrinth 10 minute queue though? Oh, you don't want to. It's so bad you don't even want to queue for it. It just has to be a walk time. 10 minute wait. <laughs> 10 minute wait. It's I not. Would queue for stuff. We need to see what stuff's Yeah, like. legit. That's probably, yeah, that's probably the only coaster really we need to do for the rest of the day. Um, um, it's cut, yeah, coming up to half four now. So we've got about an hour until we need to get over to the carnival for the shows we want to see. And uh, yeah, like it's quite an often. I think more people, like you said earlier, are going for the football. Um, and the sun has finally broken through. We're just coming up to Destination now. It's actually got quite a short little queue coming to the next ride of the day. The 100 foot Barbary Dock Tower. Like, I will say one thing, like, it gives a really good ride. The, the, the um, G-Forces on it are really good. When you actually look at it, especially after seeing much larger drop towers, it really is a bit like anticlimactic to look at. I think they could use investing in a better, bigger drop tower. <laughs> So yeah, what with Drayton Manor selling Apocalypse, all I can say to Fort Park is if, if the investment's worthwhile and you want it to replace Detonator with a slightly better drop tower, get Apocalypse doing up, but I'm not being funny. It is a good one, the Barbary Dock Tower, I'm not knocking it, it is one of my favourite in the country, but I feel Apocalypse will go really well here. Plus if Merlin were to pay to repair it, get it all up to scratch, you'd have five towers with uh, stand-up towers available, flawless standing. And uh, Lou, after you've been on Hurricane Condor, would you like that? Yes. If Drayton Manor sold, um, sold Apocalypse to Merlin. 
Nah, like I say, it's a great drop tower, and like this is a good one, but it's just it just needs to be a bit bigger in my opinion. It's a popular ride, has quite low capacity, uh, but yeah, it'll be next ride of the day, probably only in five minutes. So only a five minute wait for Detonator. There it is a great drop tower, but I just you said the same thing. Once you've been on a larger oh, yeah. one. It's, it is, it's really short, like... No, it is great, it's a great... It is great, though. it is great. But it's not It's not as good as the likes of Apocalypse Drain Manor, which I hope we don't lose. Um, Hurricane Condor, obviously, because it's three times as high. My favourite drop tower that I've been on is Falcon's Fury at Bush Gardens, um, which you never went on. I don't think I'd ever get you on that one, just because the fact it faces you yeah, vertically. It's, on, uh, it doesn't t just tilt you, you face the ground. Nice. <laughs> anyway, we're heading over towards Stealth, that sort of direction. Um, they've got a Ben and Jerry's store here, which actually sells coffee apparently. Yeah, so, might be a port of call to grab a coffee before we go on Stealth. Uh, park levels are really quite dropping off now. So into the Ben and Jerry's ice cream parlor we go to get coffee, ice cream and loads of unhealthy treats. come out of the Ben and Jerry's scoop shop because they don't have any ice cream. Or milkshake. Or, or milkshake. Coffee. Or coffee. Literally went in there, they have like vanilla and strawberry ice cream in there. So like we do not have it, just have this massive long list basically of basically everything, everything on the uh, menu. And I was like, oh well I'll just get a coffee. They're like, we don't sell coffee, we're an ice cream parlor. I'm like, it literally says on the wall outside you sell coffee. Huh. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna have to find a cost of coffee or something like that. But we're currently waiting outside stuff. I think we're gonna make this our next ride of the day. The still great intermittent accelerator coaster. The only benefit with this one over Red Force is it has the hydraulic launch system which is uh, a lot more punchy, like the acceleration is punchier. Well, the thing is, I'd say the hydraulic launch on this is faster and snappier. Yeah. Red Force is 0 to 111 in 5 seconds. Meanwhile, this gets up to 80 in 2.5 and a half seconds. Actually, it's faster than that because they changed it when they opened it uh, after they opened it because of the amount of rollbacks it was handling. So I think it's like 1.8 seconds. Um, so yeah, it's going to be our next one today on a half an hour queue. So yeah, stealth up next. <laughs> So we've stopped off, we've had a coffee in the dome now, we've done a few extra rides and it is time to head back to the carnival to end our day. It's coming up to quarter to five now, uh, there's a few back to back shows, so there's like the um, there's like some dance trio coming up now in the next few minutes at quarter to six. Then after that we have the Mayan dance, which you wanted to see. Uh, and then at half six we have the fire breather. And there's no chance of rain, it's brightened up a treat now. So that's going to be next. I've actually got their wobbly uh, yeah, people wobbly around there. there. Yeah, the, uh, the ones you get in America. I like them, they're quite funny. Uh, so yeah, let's head back into the carnival, watch some entertaining shows, and then that'll be it for our day at Fort Park. Some 
fly. The time is now, my wondrous minds. Take to the stage, it's ready and primed. So move like there's no tomorrow. Take it from me. Dancing together will set you free. Oh, hello, baby, you called, I can't hear a thing. I have done no service to the club, you say, you say. What, what, what did you say? Oh, you're breaking up on me. Right, so that's a few of the acts from the carnival there. Uh, I think there was one more uh, in about half an hour, the fire breather. We decided that we're going to call in now. Um, I've, had I've had a really good day. I must say, if you're able to come down here for the summer holidays to uh, visit the carnival event, it's well worth it. I Plenty it's on. Too busy here today. No, it hasn't been too busy today. Well, we've just been lucky or something like that. Uh, but yeah, brilliant crowd levels. I think the entertainment they're offering is good. Uh, probably the highlight of the day for me was the trailers Bozo's Escape Maze. Yeah, that was absolutely awesome. brilliant. Got me really hyped for the likes of um, of, of Friday Nights later in the year. I never um, even saw trailers as the original. I, I went on it with Lewis and it, it was it was really good. But yeah, I had a brilliant day here and I thought it was going to be super busy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just you know really impressed with what Fort Park are doing. Makes me want to look forward towards like October Fest, which is doing later in the year, yeah. and of course Friday Nights, which never cease to amaze me. Uh, anyway guys, we're going to leave the vlog here, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, by all means leave a like. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and we will see you in the next video. Till then.